Hey guys, it's Jeremy. I'm gonna talk about uh, you know one of those things you you always hear about vitamin C. It's something that our society is bombarded with. Uh, your doctor will probably tell you to take it. It's mentioned in every single vitamin commercial, in every single health product commercial for like immune health, um, in things like airborne. And it is excellent for immune health. I can't say enough about it. What I do is tell you some of the lesser known things and some of the alternates get you to the, the truth. Um, and of course I will talk about its greater known functions too. Uh, it boosts the immune system by protecting from what's known as free radicals. You probably heard of this too. Um, free radicals are substances that are innately very unstable uh, and by the nature of chemistry are looking to become stable. Um, they leach out electrons from in the body, they leach out electrons from necessary chemicals, they, they take it from certain body functions, and um, body structures, uh, making those necessary body parts, functions, and chemicals damaged. Um, you know, when this happens long or hard enough, the damage becomes noticeable. Uh, it's it's similar to rust not that your body will rust but like a car will but it will rust in other ways uh, because if you think of a car it sits out or you don't clean it or whatever it is the outside the paint or the 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 muffler and whatever other pieces of metal when you see rust on them they're oxidized and this happens in your body and vitamin C is one of those many things that prevents that. You know, and I've said in other videos, vital, necessary for life, vital vitamin. Um, the amin is something else. But we have to take it every day or your body, it's, it's your body's going to break down anyway. But to, to, to live a better physical life, um, by taking vitamin C and all sorts of other antioxidants. Um, studies have shown that vitamin C relaxes blood vessels, therefore lowering blood pressure. Um, so, you know, if you have a heart problem like I do, or blood pressure or circulatory problem, whatever it is, it will help you. Or if you have cholesterol, whatever it is, um, lowers your blood pressure. Uh, high enough levels have been shown to reduce the LDL in the blood. Um, LDL is bad cholesterol. And the simplest way I learned that, yeah, I don't know if you have to know what LDL stands for, it's very simple to say, but it is that HDL is your high cholesterol. So high is good. LDL, low cholesterol, is the bad cholesterol. So you want HDL high is good, low is bad. So that that's, was a simple trick I learned about in school to remember that. But it, vitamin C lowers LDL when you take it in high enough amounts. Uh, also reduces the chance of gout. Um, helps with iron absorption. So this is taking excesses of vitamin C is of utmost importance if you have a blood problem well not circulatory not necessarily anyway but a blood itself problem uh, you know like anemia um, anemia related disorders or anything like that um, you know some more on the immune function it encourages white blood cell production it could raise in high enough amounts like above the minimum and depends on your body, you know, and things like that. Um, vitamin C encourages white blood cell production and encourages the existing ones to function better. Um, and here's something you've probably heard. It shortens the length and intensity of minor illnesses, like a cold, which it works, oh, believe me, it works. I've taken excess of the vitamin C while having a cold and there is a big difference. And now I will use the word may, 
not definitely, but may. Depends on your situation. Uh, shorten recovery time of pneumonia. Now, what I'm about to say will have a disclaimer, a very important one. If you had COVID or are afraid of getting it, first of all, you take the, the, the vaccine. But being as that COVID is pneumonia, um, take excesses of vitamin C. Excesses, thousands and thousands of percent, not 100% vitamin C, thousands of percent of vitamin C. No, vitamin C is not and may never be a cure for pneumonia. The thing is, it may shorten recovery time, how you feel as it winds down or make it a little shorter, the pneumonia a little shorter. May, not definitely. But keep that in mind with COVID. Um, also a very strong antioxidant for the nervous system. Uh, reduces oxidative stress of and inflammation of the spine, brain, and nerves. Um, also, therefore, reducing risk of dementia. Now, two definitions for you. Oxidative stress and inflammation. Now, I got these, uh, you might laugh, from Wikipedia, but I still found them to be accurate. Oxidative stress. Now, these are quotes from, that I, from Wikipedia. Reflects an imbalance between the systemic manifestation of reactive oxygen species and the biological system's ability to detoxify the reactive intermediaries or to repair the resulting damage. When your body can't clean itself or repair damage from whatever it was. Oxidative stress. Vitamin C can help and reverse this. Um, you know, it also refers to, um, you know, disturbances in reactions in cells. You know, sometimes with cells, if your body is not right, can produce peroxides, free radicals that damage all components of the cells. The cells are the, you know, the basic, we probably all know that the basic structure of life in any living being, species, whatever it is, lions, tigers, and bears, and humans, and everything. So they damage that. So that's what, um, I'm sorry, oxidative stress is. It dam damages everything. Uh, inflammation, also taken from Wikipedia, part of the complex biological response of the body tissues to harmful stimuli, such as pathogens, damaged cells, or irritants. It is a pr protective response involving Im immune cells, blood vessels, and molecular mediators. The function of inflammation is to eliminate the initial cause of cell injury, clear out necrotic is dead. Necrotic cells and tissues damaged from the original insult and the inflammatory process and to initiate tissue repair. Um, so, vitamin C, I'm sorry, it, it, it is, helps or reverses those processes. Note, taken from Wikipedia. Sorry, I, I, that's why I'm saying it. I copied, basically. I copied that into my brain. So, credit to Wikipedia. I uh, forgot what it's called when I used to do that in college for papers. Plagiarism, there we go. Um, now comes the part I've said in previous videos. To recap the quick and easy definition of a water-soluble vitamin, must be taken with water. You're probably drinking something with your meal anyway. Uh, ingested with and digested with water to be absorbed by the body. 
meaning also it gets flushed out with water too. So if someone like myself, my doctor once said I drink too much water, uh, if someone drinks lots of water and uses the bathroom a lot, hint, hint, the, the water can dilute it and the vitamin C can leave the body more frequently. Depends on your body too. Yet another reason 100% is the minimum. Absolute minimum. Along with that 100% minimum, there are many things that interfere with absorption or can. Uh, America's two favorites, two favorite poisons, caffeine and cigarettes. Uh, this is why it's important to take supplements. Um, there's also pollution in the air too, which I will go into, uh, well, real quick. Uh, this is why it is very important to take supplements. Our American diet on the whole does not provide enough of anything, except fat and carbs, sugar, altered sugars. Other things that, um, that can affect um, vitamin C absorption, um, as well as the overall function of the vitamin is it include too much sunlight, extended cooking times of foods that can take out vitamin C, pollution, chemo, aspirin like anyone with a heart problem has to take, Tylenol, some medications for heart disease like blood thinners, and many other things um, can affect vitamin C absorption and use and function and I just learned some stuff myself about you know a reminder of like having a heart problem or living in a very sunny state learns about some got, got a reminder about some of the vitamin C in my own body deficiencies so even a person educated trained and licensed in this is not perfect hint hint again um, Deficiencies can include dental problems like scurvy. Uh, that's really not much of a problem, at least in many Western countries anymore. Um, dental problems like scurvy, your teeth rot away, your gums, anemia. Um, that's important if you already have a blood disorder. Exhaustion, pain in the limbs, mainly the legs, skin problems, and changes in hair and nails. Now this made me think about something. The, I, I see all the time, I watch two TV shows. I watch Impractical Jokers and Law and Order. And even in that, and our country watches TV all day long and records everything. But even in that two shows that I watch, there's always hair product commercials on TV. Oh, I'm sure very, some of them are very good, and keratin and whatever else they bring up. But maybe, you know, taking excesses of vitamin C may save you money and not needing all that expensive stuff. If you take care of your body, you might not need that expensive whatever shampoo it is to begin with. Another reason why supplementation is so in American societies. Um, I take multivitamins twice daily and I also take something I've mentioned in previous videos, the combination vitamin. Um, it's called Super B Plus C. It's basically, it's got excesses of all the B vitamin, uh, depending on what brand it is, where you get it. Generally, they have excesses of all the B vitamins and excesses of vitamin C. Now I take that three to four times daily. Like again, it just helped me get over like the most, the mildest of colds. But I take it three to four times a day in addition to the multi, which is in the morning and at night. You've got to, again, spread it out. Your body, you know, how your body uses it, the bioavailability, how much water. So you can't just take it all at once and expect it to be okay. You got to space it out during the day. Um, it is generally safe to take as much vitamin C as in a day as possible. I don't know how I remember this. When I went back to school for nutrition, it was 
I can't believe it was 10 years ago, it was 2011, and the very first semester, I don't know how I remember this from 10 years ago, but the teacher taught, oh, asked me what happened a minute and a half ago, I have no idea. But um, 10 years ago, taking that class, I remember the teacher talking about 10,000% of vitamin C a day. Now, that is, if I do my math correctly, that was not my strong point, 100 times the 100% minimum. So you, in that way, you'd be getting 100 times the minimum. Um, it is generally safe to take as much vitamin C in a day as possible. You will see great changes in your health. You know, and again, someone like me, I live in a very sunny state. I take blo uh, aspirin, a blood thinner, you know, pollution, whatever else it is, maybe something in what I'm eating. You know, it's, it's, oh, and if my mother watches, I swear I don't drink caffeine, but caffeine. And she knows that may or may not be true. But, um, you know, you got, uh, and plus you don't, how things are cooked at a restaurant. Something as simple as that. Uh, unfortunately, cancer, that's not, you know, that might be something you cannot change or a uh, medication for heart disease. But there's, you know, you have to take as much as you can. So, with that, take as much as you can. But, again, another but, and something I cannot stress enough. I am not a doctor. I am a nutritionist. The doctor, what I had to take in school is this much. Let's say it's this much. Maybe it's that much or that much or that, whatever. I take, I had to know this much. Your doctor, the, the whatever the minimum is, had to take that much at minimum i don't know what the minimum doctor is you know i don't know i took that much they have to take at minimum that much and then there's other doctors surgeons this that and the other thing who have to take that much but um you'll see great changes see a doctor first and uh have a good one